Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining me for another meditation here at the Margate Community Church. If you remember, during the summer at least, uh, we're doing once a month, the first Wednesday of every month. So after today, then our next one will be the first Wednesday in August. You know, I was just thinking, we've passed through May and June now, and there were quite a few graduations this year in our congregation. I'm sure all of you, or most of you, had at least a couple of graduates in your family or among your friends. And I was so glad to see that graduations were back this year. And all of the activities that seniors look forward to, the prom, the, the award ceremonies, no more drive-through graduations like last year. I can remember all the way back to high school, my English teacher in Atlantic City High School, Ms. French, reminded us seniors that we were not going to graduate. The ceremony was a commencement. Graduation implied being finished, and we seniors were really just turning the page to the next part, the next chapter in our lives. It was a starting point for a lifelong process of learning. Well, I really didn't agree with her at the time. I was glad about graduation, but I realize now that she was correct. Whatever point we find ourselves in life, no matter how old or young we are, no matter how crazy sometimes our lives can be, each new day is a commencement. We have finished what is past, a whole new day has begun. As Christians, this takes on even more meaning. No matter what is behind us, Christ offers us new life, a new start, a new chance every single day. The Bible reminds us that Paul said, in, with anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone, and a new life has begun. I don't think that ancient people were all that much different than we are. Yes, the culture was certainly different, but human beings are basically pretty much the same. And centuries ago, Paul was positive that God was guiding him and leading him through life. He realized that as long as he followed God, God would guide his life. He said, the Lord will fulfill his plans for me. You see, God can use all that has gone before us, all the experience, all the knowledge, even the mistakes, and use who we have become for God's wonderful purpose. But here's the challenging part. Here's where we come to that trust word. We need to trust God's plan for us. Jeremiah reported that God told us some wonderfully encouraging words. And in fact, we honored our graduates here in church a couple of weeks ago, and I read them this verse. I reminded them that God says, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to hurt you, plans to give you a hope and a future. These are the words of a God who adores each one of us. God proved that in Christ Jesus so that we can face the commencement of every day with confidence. In the words of a young songwriter, Natasha Bedingfield, she said, today is where the book begins. The rest is still unwritten. Will you pray with me? Thank you, God, for loving us and watching over us. No matter what our situation is today, help us to trust that you have a special plan for each one of us. We turn to you in faith and ask you to guide each of us to the life that is pleasing to you. 
We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I hope you'll join us on Sundays. We have stopped seating arrangements and reservations and masks, and we're getting back to normal. Um, we got back to normal this past Sunday with the choir here and the congregation singing again. Bibles in the pews, hymn books in the pews, and more importantly, seat cushions on the pews. So please come and join us for worship. Stay well and be safe. Bye-bye.